Good morning, church, in every location. Good to be in the house. I know you all just got real comfy, but I want on every campus, in every location, even online, for you to stand to your feet just for a moment. I don't want us to get so comfortable. We just go into church as usual mindset. The presence of God is in the house. The power of God is in the house. He's able to transform us. He's able to change us through the power of His Word. And He's already begun that, I believe, in the worship and in the atmosphere. I'm so thankful for this house. When my plane touched down in Alabama last night, I was like, home sweet home, Alabama. And I just began to think about the house and about the investment it makes into the generations like we just saw, into marriages like we just saw, into small groups and community like we just heard. And I'm so thankful that in the midst of everything else that's going on in our world, there is a place where we're building our life on Christ, the solid rock. And today we're gonna read that Word and we're gonna open that book that gives us that light to our path. And we're gonna believe God to help us see something clearly, to help us understand something deeply. And so right now, where you are in your location, just give God that open hand, that open heart, that open mind. God, we thank You today for Your presence. There is nothing like Your presence. God, one word from You and everything changes. Atmospheres shift. Light comes on in the darkest of places. There is no one today that is too far gone for you. And there is no one that is too deep in a pit for you. There is no one that is too far beyond your reach. God, you see us all and you are mindful of us all down to the hairs on our head. And God, you have us here on purpose for purpose. So God, today I pray that every ear would be open. Every heart would be receptive. God, I pray today that You would do what only You can do. Holy Spirit, have Your way today. And God, I pray I would get out of the way. And we give You all the glory for it. In Jesus' Name, Amen and Amen. You may take your seats. Well, I'm just so, so thankful that We have a pastor in this house, our senior pastor, Pastor Chris, that leans in to the voice of God for the house. I'm thankful that we have a pastor that says, I don't just wanna feed them anything. God, I wanna know what do you need me to feed them right now? And because of that intentionality and because of that surrender, that new series that began last week that we now are in the second week on where we're looking at our life, our money, our hope, that's come out of uh, of our pastor's heart as God began to speak to him and let him know, get the people ready for the year ahead. Help them know how to navigate in 2024 the terrain that they may not be aware of yet is ahead of them, but I need them in advance to get prepared. I need them to be prepared for what life may bring at them, for what may happen in their finances, so that their hope is not shaken in a season where things are changing. And so last Last week, as we began this series, Pastor Chris began to talk to us about that hope that is an anchor for our soul. How many of you glad there is an anchor for your soul today? And I get to add another layer. And I'm telling you, the first service was awesome. I mean, that 8.30 crowd, they were ready to go. So you got your work cut out, second service. I hope you're ready too, to respond to what it is that God wants to hand us today. I I want to help you today with an area where if you can get this, if you can get this steady, if you can get this stable, just like that anchor for your soul, if you can, if you can address this area of your life, I believe 2024 will look entirely different for you. Because today I want to talk to you about how you have the power to change your mind. And if you can change your mind, you can change your life. I want you to understand that if we're gonna navigate life, money, hope, then the navigational tool that you and I are all using all the time is our mind. It is our mind that is the GPS 
for our life. And so often we forget that we have the power to control and we have the power to direct and we have the power to instruct this God-given gift that we have, this mind that we have been entrusted with. Your mind is a powerful navigational tool. The truth is, if you show me your mind, I'm gonna show you your map for 2024. Now, for some of you, that's good news. For others of you, that's scary, which is why it's good you're in the house today because show me your mind, I'll show you your map. It's navigating you already. The truth is that there are two preachers in the room today. There's what I am saying and there's what your mind is saying about what I am saying. Your mind has an opinion. It has a way of processing. And we need to understand the power of our mind today so that whatever comes in 2024, we have set our navigation system according to God's mind map, not the world's mind map. Proverbs 23 puts it this way. It says in the Amplified Version, do not eat the bread of a selfish man or desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. In behaviour, one who manipulates. He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you but it is begrudging the cost. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. It's painting you a picture of what I'm trying to help you see today. That though you may nod your head in this service, though you may give a good amen at a point in this service, not your lip service is not determining where you go after the service. It's what your mind's saying to you about what it is your amen. In other words, it has your thinking you're going to be this year, not how you're saying and not how you're speaking. When uh, I was first dating my husband and we were just getting engaged, he realised that he wanted to get all the family to love him as much as I loved him. And so he figured, I know what I'll do. I will take her siblings out for dinner and kind of win them over with my American charm and some food. And so the only problem was that he didn't understand that my siblings, I have three of them, they like food. And so he took them out and he was only on an intern's youth pastor salary, which at that time was $70 a month. And not only is he trying to save, you know, for a wedding, but now he's taking the siblings out to try and impress them. And so he, as a man thinks, okay, he says to the, my siblings, order whatever you want. But how many of you know, that's not what he's thinking. He's thinking, please be cheap because I don't have much money. But my siblings didn't think about what he was thinking. They just thought about what he was saying. And so they ordered appetizers and then they ordered entrees and then they ordered sides to their entree and then they ordered dessert. And then they had a milkshake with their dessert. And when the waitress came to my husband and said, sir, what would you like? He kind of choked and went water and didn't eat a thing the entire two hours duration of the meal as they were eating. He was begrudging the cost because he knew I'm going to have to pay for this long after the meal. And in our own life, we can say the right things. We can nod our head at the right things, but it's as you're thinking that's going to create the navigational system that your life follows this year. It's as you're thinking about your life, as you're thinking about your money, and as you're thinking about the things you put your hope in, so the direction of your life will go. The Bible tells us good news in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. It tells us that we have a choice about the kind of mind that you and I have. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of what? Of a sound mind. A sound mind. How many of you in 2024 want a sound mind? Amen. Only one? Yeah. How many of you in 2024 want a sound mind? 
The, the root word for that word sound from the Greek, the root word sozo means to have disciplined and self-controlled, a protected, a safe and secure mind. I want in 2024, when storms happen and challenges happen and that problem comes to intimidate me and the enemy tries to attack me, I want all of those circumstances to find that I have a mind that is protected and it is safe and it is secure, but you're gonna have to do the work to put those things in place. You have the option to have a mind that is unsound or a mind that is sound. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14 through to 16, it says this, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are only discerned through the Spirit. But the person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things. Such a person is not subject to merely human judgments for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. But we, we have the mind of Christ. You and I have an ability to have the mind of Christ, to have His thoughts about what it is we are dealing with, to have His clarity about the confusion in the world around us, to have His peace in the middle of the trial and the testing season. We have an ability to lift our mind to another level. Your mind is responsible for three functions, for your thinking, for your feeling, and for your choosing. So when someone says, what were you thinking when you did that? You have to go, I I should probably go back and analyse my mind because that choice and those feelings came from my mind. And it's my mind that I have to grab a hold of in 2024 because if I can change my mind, then I can change my life. So this year, as we're looking at this series at the beginning of the year, my prayer is for us, church, that we would have the Isaiah 26 verse 3 revelation Because it says in Isaiah 26, verse three, it says, you will keep in perfect peace. Anybody want perfect peace in 2024? Anybody want to find, I mean, it sounds too good to be true, but the Bible's telling us that you will keep in perfect peace. Who? Those whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you and so how do we get our mind stayed on Christ how do we in 2024 set our mind in a way that the world cannot unset by the circumstances around us how do you fix your mind when it comes to your money and your home and your hope and your life well I want to ask you a few questions this morning to help you begin to focus in and begin to fix where you may need to fix some things in your mind. Number one question I wanna ask you is this, what's on your mind? (laughs) What's on your mind? Have you ever looked blank, had that blank expression and someone's gone, what's on your mind? And all of a sudden you realise, wow, there must be something on my mind because I'm vacant, but my mind's gone somewhere. And the asking of the question makes you begin to ask yourself, well, what is on my mind? And today I wanna ask you, what, what is on your mind? You don't have to answer me audibly because maybe that would be embarrassing. What if I had a remote control in my hand this morning and I could point it at somebody's head and what was in their mind would appear on the screen? That could be fun, it also could be scary, right? I point the remote as you're amening me and suddenly the Super Bowl comes up on the screen (laughs) behind me, right? I I point my remote over here and and someone's mind is going to, did I leave the laundry on? Did I leave the oven on? Like, because our mind constantly is choosing to have things on it and so often we're not questioning what is on our mind. We're just allowing things to land on it, but when things land on your mind, they become part of the navigational system for what happens next in your future. And some of you don't like what you chose in 2023. 
and you don't like some of the consequences of some decisions of 2022, and I'm letting you know you can get mad at the enemy, but before you get mad at the enemy, you better ask yourself, what was on my mind to allow me to feel what I felt to lead me to make the choice that I made? Okay? Got to take responsibility. I think one of the saddest stories in the Bible, tragic stories in the Bible, is the story of the children of Israel. I mean, so much promise, so much potential. I mean, God had a roadmap for their life, a roadmap to get them out of captivity, lead them into freedom, a roadmap that looked like a promise and a great hope for the future. And yet, we read that they never made it. But I want you to know, church, they didn't make it not because God wasn't able. They didn't make it because Pharaoh was too hard to be dealt with. The reason why they didn't make it was because what was on their mind didn't navigate them to the promise, but it held them in the past. Look at what God's mind was for the children of Israel as He expresses it through the mouthpiece of Moses in Exodus 6 verse 6. This is God's mind. He said, say to them, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgments. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. I mean, that is good news they are receiving. You don't get anything greater than the I am telling you what he I am is gonna do. This is the great I am saying, I am gonna deliver you and I am gonna free you and I am gonna adopt you as my own and I am gonna make a way where there is no way and I am gonna secure a promise for you and your inheritance. This is I am. But verse nine, as Moses delivers this news, we find that though there is this truth that is there for them to take and attain, their mind is in an entirely different place. Moses reported this, but they did not listen to him. Why? Because their mind was filled with discouragement and aware of their harsh labour. Listen, today, some of you need to know, God has Canaan for you. He has a promise for you. But if you can't get Egypt off your mind, You'll never step into the Canaan God has for your life. Some of you, you, you've got Egypt on your mind and I'm talking about Egypt from years ago. I'm talking about things that happened to you five, ten years ago and it's still on your mind. And the great I am has spoken over your life. I am your provider. I am your healer. I am the way and I am the truth and I am the anchor in the storm and I am the one that's gonna make a way where there is no way. I am gonna prosper you and I am gonna bless you and I'm gonna hem you in before and behind. He has told us, We have a book full of I am promises and yet we have Egypt on our mind. I'm telling you this year, some of you need to stop circling and going round and round and round your Egypt, which has been on your mind for way too long. The failure, the betrayal, the disappointment, the fear, the discouragement, the harsh labour, that's what it was for them. But all of us have to ask the the same question, what is on my mind? Because what is on my mind is directing and navigating my life. And this year, God wants you to step in to your promise 
And yes, there may be some giants. And yes, there may be some situations that you have to deal with, but you gotta come back to what I am said and put it at the top of your mind. This year is a year for you to hold fast, but you will not hold fast if Egypt is on your mind. See, we've got to understand the power of our mindset. And we have to understand that some things need to be removed from the menu of your mind. Hello? Like if your mind was a restaurant, (laughs) there's some dishes on your mind that, that you know, you know they don't taste good. But you still eat them. You still sit down and entertain them. You still have a conversation with them and you need to this year say, okay, 2024, this is off the menu. We are, divorce is off the menu. You know what? Unforgiveness is off the menu. You know what? Bitterness is off the menu. It's not even going to come near my mind. I'm going to choose to put a different list of dishes on the menu this year. And I'm telling you, your marriage will taste better. It might not look better in the immediate. It might not feel any different in the first instance, but eventually the more that what's on your mind is healing, restoration, God's promise, His purpose, the way that He can work a miracle in your situation, I'm telling you. What's on your mind? Some of you need to go home after church today. Some of you married couples. In the car. Say, you want to go first or shall I go first? (laughs) I want to ask a question. What's on your mind? You need to be honest with each other. If it's fear, you need to identify it and call it out and deal with it in your marriage and in your family and say, I don't think anymore we should allow this to be in the space of our home and our life and our family. What's on your mind? Second thing you have to do after you've realized what's on your mind and removed what shouldn't be on your mind, then secondly, you have to renew your mind. There's work to do here. We've got to start rolling our spiritual sleeves up and begin to renew our mind. It needs a renewal process. There's a story in Matthew 12, verse 43. It's describing someone's life, someone's heart, someone's mind, and it says this. It says, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. And when it arrives, it founds the house is unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. And then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they all go and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. The Bible's saying it's not enough to get the thing out of your mind. Now you have to fill your mind with the right stuff. Now you have to fill the space because the enemy's gonna come and try and get back in that space with all its friends. So we're like, well, you know, I'm not going to think about that anymore. Okay, that's good. That's the first step. But what are you going to think about instead of thinking about that? Because if you don't replace it and you don't renew it, after a while, you'll drift back to your old pattern of thinking, only this time it will have its relatives with it. See, See, when you don't renew your mind... You step into a season which is your future and your promise, but because you've not renewed your mind, you're the 10 spies who haven't replaced Egypt with the excitement of Canaan. And so you step into potential, but your mind's writing a negative report. There was only two, Joshua and Caleb, who had renewed their mind. They were already living in the promise. They were already excited about the future. Do you know that I'm so excited about 2024 and I have no idea what's gonna happen? (laughs) You're like, that's crazy, that's fake. No, I've renewed my mind and I'm standing on the Word of God and no matter what the storm, my hope is sure. No matter what the circumstances, my provider is the Lord, not my job, not the economy. I I I can have a joy. 
that is my strength. That's why it talks about Joshua and Caleb being of a different spirit. When you renew your mind, you have a different spirit. And I believe it's time for us as a people of God to navigate our life, our money, and our hope with this renewed mind of Christ. That's why it says in Romans 12 verse two, come on, the Bible's full of this stuff. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. This year, if you could just renew your mind, you could change your life. If you could just get that that old way of thinking out of your mind, you'd find a new way of thinking. The church should not think like the world. Hello? When the world tell us what to think in the education system, the political system, the economic, when the world tell you how to do life, money and hope, you should already have a pattern that is not conformed to the world, but a pattern that is conformed to the Word of God. We live by a higher way, a higher level. Stop lowering and dumbing down the mind that God has given you and conforming it to a pattern that He never asked you to conform it to. How do we renew our mind? Well, you gotta get a little aggressive. I know you're all Southern and sweet and y'all, but you're not at your football games, so I know you have another side to you. Need some of that football cheering, crazy fan kind of energy when it comes to your mind. And you need to get aggressive with the things that do not belong in your mind and take thoughts that don't belong captive. It says in 2 Corinthians, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to our flesh. For our weapons of warfare have divine power this year, no matter what you face. You have weapons that have divine power that can destroy strongholds. I'm telling you this year, you don't have to be chained up, locked up, beaten down. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive and we say to that thought, you will bow your knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I mean, I think anyone in the Super Bowl and I have limited knowledge about American football, so the analogy will be short, but I don't think anybody whose job it is to defend is thinking to themselves, well, you know, I don't know that I'm gonna go for that one today. I don't think anyone's entering the pitch this afternoon and thinking to themselves, well, if I really feel it, if I really feel it's like perfectly aligned, then you know, maybe I'll go for it. But you know, there's a few I don't really need to go for. No, they are defending every single ball that's coming into their territory. They're taking it captive because they wanna get across the line and win the game. And some of you got so lazy and apathetic and I just wanna wake you up and say in 2024, you gotta take the ball captive. You gotta take the thought captive so you anchor your soul in every single storm. Renew your mind. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us, finally believers, this is what you need to think about. I mean, the Bible's letting you know how to do this, church. That's why I love the Bible. It's like, I'll show you how to do it. It says, whatever is true, not whatever is an opinion or a trend, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's Word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any of ec- anything of excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Centre your mind on them. I'm telling you, this is a year to think continually on these things and center your mind on them. This is not pure, it does not belong. This is not holy, it does not belong. This is not lining up with the Word of God. It is not 
coming in to the center of my mind. You've got to take back some territory this year, church. Right. And center your mind. Steady your mind on the things of Christ. Where in your life do you need to take some thoughts captive? Where in your life do you need to change the playlist? So it matches up to the playlist of Philippians 4 verse 8. When trouble comes, don't think about the trouble. Think about whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is confirmed by God's Word. And you will find you navigate through what before has held you back. And finally, what's on your mind? Renew your mind. I want to say to you, church, in 2024, for some of you, this is the year where you need to make up your mind. Make up your mind. You ever been for dinner with an indecisive person? Uh, yeah. Drives you crazy. Yeah. You're like, I just want to eat. It's not that hard. Yeah. Right, right. And if you're like me, I then begin to think, wow, if you can't choose your food, I'm worried about the rest of your life. Right. Come on. Some of you in 2023, you ate stuff you don't even like because of your indecision. You put up and tolerated stuff that you know you shouldn't have tolerated, but it was because of your indecision. And I believe 2024 requires the people of God to make up their mind. Not wait to react and respond, but no, I'm gonna make my mind up. You know, Joshua, after he'd gone through all of that stuff, after he'd seen a whole generation miss out on what was theirs because of a mindset, he's leading the people and he hears some moaning and whining and grumbling and mixed agendas and he just stands up. And in front of everybody, he begins to shout, hey, as for me, and my household, we will serve the Lord. What's he doing? He's letting them all know, I don't care what your debate is and I don't care what your feelings are. I already made my mind upon this subject. I already made a decision and I didn't just make it for me. I made it in my mind for my family and for my children and for my children's children. And when the enemy comes after them, I'm gonna remind the enemy, no, I set my mind that this will be a household that loves God. This will be a household that has a generational legacy. I made my mind up. In the book of James, chapter one, it tells us that we've got to stop living a life that's full of doubts. It says the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. Such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Because being a double-minded man or a double-minded woman will make you unstable and restless in all your ways. And I wanna help you, church, this year. Don't have a year where the politics pull you one way. The economics pull you another way. The betrayal pulls you another way. Your, your, your lack of hope and despair pulls you another way. No, no, no. Don't be a double-minded man. As for me and my house, I'm planted. That means I'm not double-minded. That means it's not up for negotiation. As for me, I'm gonna put my seed in the soil of the Kingdom of God and I'm tithing. I don't care what you say and I don't care what the finances look like. I don't care what happens with my job. I made a decision. I'm not double-minded about this. There's just some areas this year where you need to make your mind up. Colossians 3 finally says this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Set your heart on things above. Set your mind on things above this year. 
As we navigate life, money, hope, family, relationships, economy, politics, I'm telling you, set your heart, set your mind. Don't wait to set it. Set it. I'm making my mind up. And this year, you will find you hold fast in a way that you did not feel was possible. Not because the circumstances were favourable or the wind didn't blow, but something changed. You changed your mind and it changed your life. All across the house, just close your eyes right where you are. God, I thank You that You say in Your Word, we can have the mind of Christ. For many of us, we have lived with periods of our life where our mind has been confused, even tormented, where our mind has led us to a poor choice, to an irrational feeling. But God, we do not want 2024 to be a year where the waves and the wind determine our course. But God, instead, we want this year to set our course. And God, You told us that's possible. For all we have to do, God, is set our mind on things above, renew our mind and focus on those things that Your Word tells us are life-giving and true. So I pray across our house today, I pray for minds to become still. I pray for minds to become set. I pray for the double-minded man and woman to make their mind up. As for me, this is what I have chosen. And as eyes are closed all across the house on every location, for some of you today, you need to make a decision right now. You have been double-minded about your future with God. You have been double-minded in your commitment. You've been in and you've been out depending on the circumstances of your life. But today, there's an opportunity for you to say, as for me, I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna make Him Lord. And I'm gonna mean it. And I'm gonna give Him my heart. And I'm gonna give Him my soul. And I'm gonna give Him my mind. And if today you know you need Christ to come in, to help you renew your mind, to forgive you of your sin, to set your life on track this year. Maybe you're a prodigal, you need to come back right now as eyes are closed all across the house. Just lift your hand, that hand saying, that's me today. I need to make a decision, it's time. I need to make my mind up this year. I don't wanna be in and out. I don't wanna be two steps forward, two steps back. I'm gonna make a decision. Come on, right where you are, just stick your hand. Once you've lifted your hand, then I just want you to take that same hand and put it on your heart. God, you see every hand that just raised and you see the intentionality behind that hand. And I pray right now, God, that everyone that is seeking You will find You in this moment. God, I thank You today for forgiveness of sin. And I thank You today for You becoming a Saviour and the Lord of their life. I thank You today for restoration. And I thank You today for transformation. God, I pray today as they surrender to You, that You would come in and move in and take over their mindset and help them, God, become that person that has set and fixed their mind on You. God, we give You all the glory for it all. We thank You, God. We thank You, no matter the circumstance, that we can set our mind on things above. In Jesus' Name, Amen Amen. and Amen.